serenity, you whose disposition is kindly to your friends, you daughter of justice, you ultimate greatness of every city, you who possess the supreme keys to councils of state and to wars. Receive on behalf of Aristomenes the ritual honor of the victory at the Pythian Games. For you are the one who understands both how to give pleasure and how to make someone feel that pleasure with an unerring sense of timing. But whenever anyone drives harsh anger into the heart, you fiercely confront such men of ill will and with your power, you drown outrage. Little did Porphyrian know that it was you he was provoking. But gain is most dear when one takes it as a prize from the house of one who willingly gives it. He who boasts gets tripped in the fullness of time by his own violence. The hundred-headed Typhon does not get away. Nor did the king of the giants. They were subdued by the thunderbolt and by the arrows of Apollo, who welcomed from Kira with kindly disposition the son of Xenarchus, crowned with the green of Parnassus and with a band of revelers. This island, this just city-state, did not fall away from the graces. Connected as it is to the glorious achievements of the descendants of Iacos, it has achieved a perfect fame going back to the very beginnings. It is a subject of song for many, as its nurturing earth sprouts the greatest heroes in victory bringing contests and in violent battles. And these things stand out, radiant for men as well. But I have no time to linger in putting up to view the whole story in its full length with lyre and pleasurable song. For fear that overindulgence may come and cause displeasure. No, let my sacred obligation to you get underway right now, my boy. Which is speeding straight ahead in front of my feet and which is the nearest of all beautiful things to the here and now taking flight by the way of my craft. For you, follow at wrestling matches in the footsteps of your mother's brothers, you did Theognidus proud, the one in the Olympics. Also, Clytomachos, whose victory at the Isthmians gave proof what? to the boldness of his limbs, making great the house of the Maedulidae, you win as a prize the words. That once the son of Argles said, when he saw the sons holding their grounds at Thebes by the power of the spear. At the time when they, the Epigonoi, had come from Argos on the second expedition, thus he spoke about those who fought. By inherited nature, the noble purpose shines forth from fathers to sons. I can see clearly Alcmaion wielding the patterned snake on his blazing shield in the forefront of the gates of Cadmos. But the one who had lost his strength in the early happenings is now on solid footing with the announcement of a better bird omen than before. He is the hero Adrastos. At home, though, his fortune will be the opposite. For he alone of the army of the Danans will have to gather the bones of a son who died. While the rest of the warriors come home unharmed with their good fortune granted from the gods. Home to the public places of Abbas, with their wide spaces for song and dance. Thus spoke Ampiareos. And I also take joy in casting a garland at Alcmaion, and I shower him with song because he was a neighbor to me, guardian of my possessions. He came to me as I was heading towards the navel of the earth, that lasting subject for song, 
putting me in touch with his inborn crafts of a seer. But you, the one who shoots from afar, who rules the sacred precinct that receives all, that has good renown, in the valley of the Pitho, you granted in that place the greatest of all joys. And in his own homeland, earlier, you had brought about the coveted gift of a pentathlon victory at your festival. O oh Lord, I pray to you with a mind that is ready and willing. Look upon me as I fit my voice with whatever tuning you desire as I travel down each path of song and back up again. Justice presides over the band of revelers with their sweet song. I ask for the unstinting regard of the gods, Xenarches, on the occasion of your good fortune. For if one possesses good things without a lengthy ordeal, many think that he is cunning, that he is not one of the ignorant. The way he arranges his life, they think, with straight plan stratagems. But that is not ordained to be in this world of men. It is the superhuman force who provides, exhorting different men at different times, at other times bringing them down in due proportion. You have your prize that you won in Megara, and the one you got in the sacred recesses of Marathon. And you mastered in manly feats the local contest at Hera in three separate victories. Hera's summons. Four times did you come slamming down from above with no kind thoughts on top of bodies below. For all of them, the outcome at the Pythian Games was no pleasurable return home. No sweet laughter was there to make an aura of joy and grace as they came back home to stay at their mother's side. They lurk in byways, trying to avoid their personal enemies, stung as they are by their bad fortune. But whoever has as his lot, something beautiful in the here and now, in a time of great luxuriance, such a man starts soaring, driven by his aspirations, lifted high in the air by his feats of manliness, with his ambition going beyond material wealth. The pleasure that mortals get waxes in a short space of time. And just as quickly, it falls to the ground, shaken by adverse opinion. Creatures of the day, what is a someone? What is a no one? Man is the dream of a shade. But when the brightness given by Zeus comes, there is at hand the shining light of men and the life force gives pleasure. Hygiena, dear mother, make a naval mission of freedom for this city-state as you bring it back to light and life, back to Zeus. May Iacos, the ruler, be there, so also Peleus and noble Telamon and especially Achilles. There ends the song as performed here by a chorus, a chorus which is an ensemble of singers and dancers. Each one had a square. Uh, each one sometimes had echoes from uh, previous singers and dancers, others did not. But what was very gratifying for the translator is how um, with all of these uh, different sounds and, and different voices, it all came together so beautifully in one integral song. And uh, the song making of Pindar is such that it was meant to be performed by a group, a group of very different people. And that's what has just happened. And in my experience, 
I have come to realize that group performance like this reenacts more accurately the life situation than any effort by any soloist. That's what makes, I think, this event a truly Pindaric event, a true event of uh, victory song, which is what these songs were about. It was the um, celebration of victory by a group. And um, I was so honored that I got to, I got to deliver the last few lines of this song because when the chorus, the singing and dancing ensemble reenacts, they can reenact the poet who is praising the athletic victor. They can reenact the athletic victor. They can reenact the celebratory crowd that's there. They can reenact the heroes who are sometimes speaking from the dead. And if I can circle back to a speaking hero that we heard who is saying, I failed, but my son succeeds. My child succeeds where I failed. And uh, in a sense, that's what happens towards the very end of the song, which is um, um, we are told that a human um, in his or her moment in the sun is the realization of the dreams of that human's ancestors, fathers, mothers, the whole line of ancestors. It's not that the ancestors are dreaming about us. Um, it's that they're dreaming us. Uh, we come to life because they dream us. And we are the realization, therefore, of their hopes and aspirations. And I love the way um, the group that is speaking here, because now um, the group at the very end, the part that I was privileged to read, uh, the group of the people of this island city are speaking as a group. That's what's being reenacted. It's no longer speaking heroes. It's no longer speaking poet. It's no longer speaking athlete. Now it's the whole group of people on the island and their mythology said that they're earth born, that they all came from the earth. And it was all at the initiative of one proto hero, Ayakos. Uh, for the elites of the island, uh, they could trace themselves back to Ayakos um, even indirectly. So you go from Ayakos to Peleus to Achilles and go forward in time all the way to um, the present. But for the Hoi Poloi, it was enough to say we're all descended from Ayakos, the proto and um, earthborn uh, person from, from this island. And so when the group is saying, Aigina, that's the name of the island, dear mother, it's dear mother earth, because we're all generated from mother earth. And although the rival Athenians had taken away most of the power of the Aegeanicans, these, these um, formerly earthborn people of this island state, nevertheless, they had all sorts of things to be proud of. They were there when um, the uh, invasion of the, um, of the Persian uh, uh, forces was defeated in Salamis way back when in, in 480 BCE, they were there. So they think of themselves as commandeering an armada of freedom. And I emphasize freedom because that's what they are yearning to come back. Uh, and because this is a dream, a dream that is becoming the reality of who we are in our moment in the sun, I can't help but be reminded of another champion of freedom, Martin Luther King, who said, and I was reminded of this by my colleague, Zoe, who delivered the first few lines of this song. Um, Martin Luther King said in 1963, I have a dream. And it was all about the, the, the dream of freedom, uh, a dream that uh, just as it hadn't happened at the time of Pindar's song for the people of Egina. It hasn't happened to us yet either, but there's the hope that it will happen. And I think 
and I fondly hope that um, this group that has brought the, the dream of freedom back to life in song um, will have their hopes realized in our lifetime. And uh, what better exemplification of that realization is how a descendant of Ayaklos, this proto Ijaniten, was uh, perhaps the greatest hero of ancient Greek song culture, somebody who through his song understood the feelings of women as well as men, Achilles. So dear all, it's very difficult to say something uh, more after this beautiful, um, I would nearly say song that uh, Greg gave to us, but uh, it is just my joy to thank this amazing group who was a part of the virtual procession. And I also would like to thank you who are watching us and I hope you are seeing yourselves also as a part of the virtual procession. And of course, here we are and our virtual procession is not perfect. Uh, we hear echoes, we don't hear each other sometimes, we're all very far apart. And uh, what poem is more relevant for today uh, for, with th this sense of fleetingness? Man is a dream of a shade. So life is so short, it disappears. And uh, ancient Greece is not with us anymore, it's gone also. Uh, and all we have is just fragments of vases and fragments of songs and rituals. And if you will think about our procession, of course, there is no procession. We are all uh, locked to, uh, separate in our uh, distant fleeting lives, hundreds of miles away. But yet at the same time, uh, here we are and the connection between us is very palpable. We are right here all together and uh, our connection to the distant past, to the music of and the wonder of uh, this poem is also there. So I hope that uh, this procession, uh, while I'm going now uh, in several seconds, just disappear from here as a puff of smoke and even without a puff of smoke, uh, I hope that this procession to freedom, to life and light and to muses and to music will continue invisibly for all of us.